Oh, Linda. And a guy who has appreciation for all sports, including his, and he has appreciation for great sne- shoes, his sneakers. I'm looking forward to seeing these on Giants pre- and post-game show to see what type of new drip George Consoles is rocking. World Series champion George Consoles makes his season debut here in the morning roast. We talked to him a lot last year. He's a friend of the program. George, good morning, man. How you been? Good morning, fellas. I'm doing great. and Itching for baseball to get started, just like everybody else, I hope. Are, are you making this call from a golf course? So that's, I guess that's question number one. We always got to start there. You know, if, if I would have caught you last week, I'd have been in sunny Arizona on the mm. golf course, but it's raining and a little chilly back here in Chicago. So, unfortunately, I'm dreaming of the warmer days to come. <laughs> Well, they will come, and baseball will be here before you know it. And Giants and Mariners going to open up on a Friday a couple weeks from now. So uh, looking at this Giants team coming off 107 wins, it's going to look a lot different. Let's start with the catcher spot. No Buster Posey. So, And I thought Buster Posey, not only with his bat, was very good, but I think handling the pitching staff is one of the more underrated things he was good at, and I think a lot of people inside baseball appreciated that. So Joey Bart. Has a lot of obviously he has some big shoes to fill. How do you think he'll do? Because I believe he'll get the first crack at starting a catcher. You know, just to just to echo what you said, Bonte, I, I think that Buster Posey is irreplaceable. And I think I don't even know if if it could be considered as undervalued how well he ran the pitching staff. I think that was one of his brightest um characteristics that he had is when he stood behind the plate and was putting the fingers down, us on the mound were like, Yep, I know this guy's prepared, I know he's thinking along. Um, so that brought a level of confidence and calmness uh, when you saw those fingers going down. But, you know, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what Joey Bart does. I definitely, I definitely hope he's not going into the season or into camp this year with the mentality of I have to fill Buster Posey's shoes because I think when he made his initial um, first appearance in the big leagues, I think that was kind of the mentality that he had. I think it was I was drafted to be the next Buster Posey, and we saw how he struggled a little bit, putting a little bit too much pressure on himself. Uh, but he looks a lot more relaxed out there right now. We obviously know he's a great talent. He's a great player. You've heard all the other pitchers who are coming out of the games now and commending how good of a job he's doing uh, with their relationship, with putting the fingers down. So I think he's going to be a great, great um, fit and addition to this ball club. And I think you really got to throw Kirk Casale, uh some kudos here, too, because he's such a good um, – wherever his role is going to be. Last year it was the backup catcher. He's an unbelievable pitch caller. Uh, the bat had really good flashes, and I think he's going to be a huge mentor to Joey Bart this season as well. How has pitch calling evolved over the years now with, with all of the advanced analytics and the data and so much control coming from spreadsheets and and algorithms and whatnot? How much feel now? Because like Joey Bart, for example, I mean, is he going to get it from the dugout or is he going to be working with the pitcher? And, and like, how does that break down in the modern era? Because the, the old school way of doing things, it feels like just in baseball in general is is beyond us. How are they doing it these days, George, like in terms of calling a game? Well, I don't think that the calling of a baseball game has changed at all, in my opinion. You still have to see what the pitcher is doing well that day. You know, you look at a guy like Jake McGee, for example. You know that he has a really good fastball. Mm -hmm. So if his fastball is not going as well as he'd like, maybe he's not locating it well that day, guess what? You're still going to call fastballs because that's his best pitch. Um, So I think that it's definitely a feel thing. A guy like myself, for example – I had a bunch of pitches in the repertoire. If I and my slider was notably my best one. If there was a day that my slider wasn't going great, Buster or Hector Sanchez or Eli Whiteside or, or Andrew Susak, whoever it was, you could tell right from the first or second slider I threw that I didn't have it that day. Then you might throw two seams and cutters and, and mix in a curveball to back off of it, but you still have to gauge what the pitchers got that day. So I don't think pitch calling has changed okay. all that much. I think the approach to the game has changed where now you're seeing a lot more high fastballs and then big breaking balls off that power stuff where you're just challenging. I think that approach has changed. But when you're putting the pitches down, it's really the same as it always has been. It's what's this pitcher who's coming in the game, his bread and butter, what's he good at, what can he execute, and what's he comfortable throwing yeah. in certain situations? That's the biggest and most important part. Well, yeah, because I mean, you see some of these prospects that are coming through through college, like this guy's never called a game, and Joey Bart apparently did call games. So I'm excited to see where we're at on him. But with the ace, Logan Webb, um, I mean, how are you going to know that these two are on the same page? What are some of the early indicators that you're looking for to make sure that this is the battery that we got that's going to be fortifying this rotation throughout the year? For me, it's always shakes. When you see a pitcher on the mound and he's sitting there shaking, as we saw 
I'll use the example because we, we talked about it last year when it happened, but Johnny Cueto and Joey Bart. When Johnny Cueto's sitting there shaking his head three, four times in a row, they are not on the same page. Hmm. Logan Webb is a younger guy who's established himself now. Joey Bart's also a younger guy. These guys know how to communicate really, really well, and I'm sure Logan Webb has got enough um, – you know, uh, stay in the big league now, enough confidence, enough knowing what he's doing to be like, hey, Joey, this is what I want to throw here. This is what I want to do in these situations. And Joey Bart will obviously see that and react to it. He'll see that he keeps shaking to maybe the changeup in a certain count. So eventually it'll just be second nature and the changeup will just be called. Um, but I think these guys are already on a pretty good um, page with one another, all, all the pitchers with Joey Bart. So I think that it's um, – what I've seen so far from all the guys is, is the, the, the arms always develop faster than the bats do in spring training. So I'm expecting the Giants pitching staff to really come out of the gates hot, as has always been the strength of our Giants teams is the pitching staff. And I expect that, along with Joey and Kurt, um, to really lead the way early in the season. Torres Contos, catch him on NBC Sports Bay Area pre and post game covering the Giants. Of course, the former Giants reliever who helped them win a World Series back in 2012. Here on a morning roast, and when you talk about this pitching staff, I agree with you. The pitching staff does look good on paper. The bullpen looks deep as always. What about this lineup? How much concerns Ugh. do you have about this lineup? Ugh. No Chris Bryant, no Buster Posey. Brandon Belt gets elevated, and then Longo, Evan Longoria, uh, needed surgery on his finger. He's going to be out for about six weeks. I don't know, Lamont George. Wade. My confidence in yeah, Lamont Wade Jr. as well. It's going to be interesting to see how Gabe Kapler, Farhad Zadi, coax uh, coax out home runs and runs out of this lineup this season. You know, I, I, I would say in the past that I would agree with you, but what I saw from this team last year was how resilient they were and how, how good of a job the next guy up came in and did. And, I mean, we just saw this new kid, Williams, come in and make an, an impact in his first at-bat. You can see him at third base. Um, you know, Brandon Belt might be uh, a, a little slow in, in coming back, but you got Darren Ruff, you got Wilmer Flores, mm-hmm. you got um, a lot of these guys, Dubon, who are – very capable of putting up the big number and hitting a home run and doing big things. So I'm not really worried about it. I mean, the bats are always a little bit slower uh, to begin with, but the pitching staff, in my opinion, is so good right now in going into the season that you can get away with the offense maybe not firing on all cylinders. But once these guys do come back, you know how good of a lineup it has. And obviously, again, Buster Posey not being in there with his right. physical bat and his presence in the lineup in the locker room is going to obviously be missed. But you got guys like Brandon Belt and Brandon Crawford. I mean, Brandon Belt's walking around just carrying a permanent C over his <laughs> shoulder now, just yeah. walking around being like, I'm the guy, which is awesome. Um, Did you, you real quick, George, leaders, you, you ever that, expect Brandon Belt to be that guy? It, it kind of came out of nowhere to me. Last season, him being a captain, being outspoken, being a guy that everybody gravitates towards in the clubhouse. Did you ever see Brandon Belt becoming that guy? Oh, he's always been that guy. He's always been that guy behind closed doors. Really? It's nice to see that personality kind of start coming out uh, for everybody to see. Yeah, you know, in the clubhouse, the plane flights, Belt Belt always had that kind of fun personality. Uh, you know, I think half of it's fun and half of it's like is he believes it and he means it, which is which has always been his personality. He's always been a guy who liked to, uh, you know, bust balls a little bit, so to speak, hmm. in the clubhouse, have a good time. And, and now you're seeing some of that personality resonate um, outside and into the media, and that's who he is. He's a he's a great, fun-loving character guy who's serious and takes his craft and profession very seriously. So I'm yeah. I'm glad that the personality is really starting to shine now. All right, I, I want to ask you about a specific player that I was so optimistic about 2019, 2020. If you combine them, it's 161 games. The guy bats 281, hits 31 homers, 90 RBIs. That's 2019, 2020. Then last year, he dips down to 224 batting average. He has the 25 jacks, but he's just not driving the ball and having the at bats that we're looking for. Strikeouts are up, the walks aren't up, they're actually down. Who is Mike Yastrzemski? Is he the 2019-2020 guy, or is he the 2021 guy, or is he somewhere in between? Well, first of all, I, I never, I never like to judge any player based on one poor year or one year that's I shouldn't even say poor, just subpar to what they were doing because that always happens. I mean, these guys are not machines; they're not going to go out there and just be the same guy unless you're a perennial All Star and you know potential Hall of Famer. Um, I think that he has a good enough track record from what he did in 19 and 20 
you always kind of have, in my opinion, that sophomore slump, so to speak. And sometimes it comes in your second year. Sometimes it's your third. But the league always kind of catches up to you at some point, and that's where you have to differentiate yourself by making the adjustment and getting past that. And I think that Yaz is a guy who grinds, and he knows the game, and he's got a great approach. So I think that um, he's more of what we saw in 19 and 20 than what we saw last year. Fair enough. I'm with you there. What about uh, Camilo Duvall? We got to talk about him. What what does he have in? What does he have in store for an encore after he took the league by storm in the last two months of the season? Well, to to to, to speak again on that sophomore slump, I think they always come, and I, and I don't. I'm not necessarily saying it's going to happen this year. Um, but what I saw from Camilo Duvall a little bit last year, um, prior to him being sent down and coming back up, is something that I really hope that he's got ironed out. Is He's got such electric stuff. It is unbelievable. You can argue that he has some of the best stuff in baseball out of the bullpen. And to me, I saw him before he was sent down to work on a few things, be a little bit afraid of his fastball. Mm -hmm. He fell in love with that slider, and it's a good slider. But when you start throwing those sliders over and over and over again, and you have 100 miles an hour in your back pocket, and a hitter can just be like, you know what? I'm going to not even think about 100 and sit on a slider. The pitch selection and the confidence in that pitch is a little bit different. And, and when he came back, he, he, to me, seemed like he had worked some of that, maybe confidence, maybe whatever, in his fastball out, and he was the full package. He was just pumping 100, 101 with a nasty slider. And it was, it was really nice to see how he was able to be such an instrumental part of that bullpen down the stretch. Now this year... I'm not sure what's going to happen, as as Cap has already come out and said that you know he's not in fa- in favor of giving out roles early. He wants guys to earn that role. Mm. To me, starting the season, Jake McGee is the closer, and you throw Camilo really? Ball. Yeah, to me okay. again, I'm not the manager. Right. This is my opinion. I no, think Jake McGee is your closer, but you throw Camilo Doval in the other three most important outs in the seventh or eighth inning. And if they happen to be in the ninth inning by a matchup, then that's fine as well. But for me, McGee is the closer. He's the guy with 31 saves last year who pitched really well, and we harped on a couple you know, big ones that he blew. But I thought McGee had a great season, and he's been in that role for a very long time. And obviously the guards change and, and the young kids come up, and, and if, if he proves that he should be the ninth inning guy over the course of the first month or two of the season, then by all means he should pitch the ninth inning. But to start this season this year, if I was – the one calling the shots, I'd have McGee in the back back end of it. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I like that, George. Jake McGee got a lot of heat. I thought Jake McGee was really, really good, man. We, we You're, you're kind of right there. We kind of fixated on two blown saves or some big blown saves there and, you know, some of the stress innings and letting – No, I, I think, was fine it, no, for, I think it boil, for me it boils down to him just strictly being a one-pitch guy. Like, I understand, like, that, uh, you know, he, he's only throwing, like, 95, 96, but he's a one-pitch guy, and I think that's that's where I think my reservation comes, even if he's changing eye levels and things like that. you got to have a secondary pitch, and that's where I get a little scared with him. And left – well, closers. If, if, let, let me let me just say one more thing about about McGee that I just want to add. Yeah, I, I understand he's got that one pitch, but that one pitch, the metrics on it are unbelievable. That's why it's so unhit, unhittable. The induced vertical break, which means how long that pitch can can defy gravity, is better than most other people's fastballs in the big leagues. Which is why everyone swings and misses. Like, where did that invisible fastball go? And when he's really good, he throws it right there at the top of the zone. And you're never going to hit it. Not any pitcher is. It's like the Sean Doolittle, why he's been so, so successful for so long, <laughs> right. is that high-induced vertical break fastball. George, any uh, big-time purchases when it comes to shoes? Uh, recently, I got a pair of Yeezys. Oh, uh, I've got some J's <laughs> in the store. But uh, other than that, I've been I, I've been laying low on the shoe game. What about you, George? Oh no, I, I never lay low on the shoe game. I got I got something for you guys this year. There's there's oh. a uh, you'll you'll like you'll you'll, you'll uh, since being a shoe guy, there's a guy called the Shoe Surgeon. You can go check him out. He made a pair of of, uh, of Jordan ones that are that are custom, obviously. Um, that that are are pretty awesome. That is I'm this sporting this year? Is this the guy that Brooks Kepka was using? 
Um, he might have been. He makes he makes fully custom like, like yeah, make skin style stuff. Yeah, it's I really think really this, cool. Yeah, I think this was the guy that that because Brooks Kepp has been wearing all kinds of different Nikes and Jordans and things like that that are like tennis shoes that have been converted into golf cleats, you know. And I'm like, there's no, I don't even know where these things exist. Oh, I guess when you have millions of dollars, you can make anything. So I'm ready to see it, George. <laughs> Yeah, you know it's it's gonna be good. I'm really excited. The uh, the the golf the the uh, and I'm not a Yeezy guy. I, I'm strictly a Nike and hey. Jordan. Oh, player. I'm an Adidas. I'm like a that. Boost guy. I, I, rock I, the I boost. like the Boost. I, I these are my first pair of Yeezys. They are very oh, very comfortable. comfortable. Wait, wait. I cannot believe them. The design is a little is a little funky. I, I'm not the biggest fan of the design. I'm usually an Air Max or Jordan guy myself. But gotta say the Yeezys are very yeah, very comfortable. On. George, before you go. Masters pick. Who you got? One guy. You get one guy. Who are you taking next week? Oh well, I mean, look from what he, from how well he's done lately. I, I can't say anybody other than Scotty Scheffler. The Ooh. guys come out of uh, come out of. Um, I don't want to say nowhere, but I mean, three tournament wins in the last you know month and a half. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying he's riding hot, and I'm taking Scotty Scheffler. I love it, George Contos, baby. Let's I go, like it. George. Always good talking to you, Doing man. We'll do it Coming throughout the hot. baseball season. Can't wait to see you on the two, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Anytime. George Consoles, former Giants reliever, NBC Sports Bay Area, pre and post game show.